Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. So we're going to talk about Mexican wines with a little bit of an American touch today. I know, I know, we're everywhere, right? So um, let, let's get right into the show today. You know, there's, there's not a ton of foreign investment here in Baja, California uh, that I've seen yet. There are a few, uh, there's a French company, Henri Luton. I hope we get a chance to taste their wines this week. Uh, has a wine house here. Um, there's also some foreign influence, but not a ton yet. So we're going to go into the first wine right away. This is a very controversial finger. This is the One Wine, One World by the famous wine critic James Suckling. Now... <laughs> I know a lot of people out there, especially if you know wine, have differing opinions about him. What he did here is he's very close to some of the winemakers here, especially uh, the famous one, Hugo de Acosta. And he blended this wine for a charity. And this is a blend of Mexican, American, and French wines. This is a blend of Grenache, Carignan, Cinso, Syrah, Petit Syrah, and Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, this was made famous because on his website he was talking about it was served to the Pope at uh, a lunch and dinner. And we found this in the shop. I think this was released or bottled in about 2010, 14 US dollars in the shop. And Shireen and I didn't, we just kind of bought it just, uh, just, to, to, just to see what it was. And I have to admit, what do you think, Shireen? It was really good for the it, texture. <laughs> it was really, really, really good. Uh, say what you want about James Suckling, I know some people love him, some people really don't like him. I find him very entertaining, actually. Uh, at least he puts himself out there as well. This literally had beautiful red, black fruits, minerals, earth. I got a little bit of bubble gum on the nose. It tasted to me kind of like a traditional Rioja mixed with a pre-red. I mean, I have this at 4.3 out of 5. I thought it was pretty darn good. Anything you want to add on that, Shereen? Like you said, it's very close to being a pure rum because of the, um, the texture, the balance, the early notes. It was, fruit, it was really, really good. And it was just a one-time thing. I know he made a case of, er, he only made 500 cases of this, of this. He also made a white out of wines out of Italy, Slovenia, and Hungary, I believe. I didn't get my hands on that. So <laughs> let's move on to the other American influence that's here in the Valley. So if you know Napa Valley, you probably know the name Camus by the Wagner family and one of their assistant winemakers actually the head of winemaking there is uh, of Mexican descent and he has a project here called Rolu his name's Luis Rodriguez that's the winemaker Rolu is a play on his name Rodriguez Luis Rolu uh, we got a chance to have dinner with him the other, last night and taste some of his wines and we still have a little bit left so I'm going to taste it and talk a little bit about the wines let me show you what the label looks like here this is the Rolu Vino Tinto from 2012. 40% Tempranillo, 40% Nebbiolo, 20% Syrah. This is the Rolu Nebbiolo from 2011. This is the single varietal Tempranillo from 2011. All three of these wines aged 18 months in French oak, 18 months in bottle. He really feels like Tempranillo and Nebbiolo are the varieties that do the best here. Before I go into tasting the Vino Tinto, Shireen, you want to add any notes on, on these wines? You love them personally. It's, it's, it really shows the potential of a, a Mexican style wine because yeah. this wine is obviously go very well with Mexican spicy food. And, and unlike a lot of the Mexican, big Mexican style wine, it doesn't have a ton of oak influence. Yeah. The oak comes to the body as texture and as weight. But you show, it shows that you don't necessarily need to hide your fruit flavors in order for to exchange for those characteristics. Yeah, if you could hear what Shireen said. These are all, uh, I'm going to piggyback off what Shireen said, a lot of fruit. These are big, big wines. If you've drank Camus, Camus is known as being a high alcohol, big, dense, rich fruit for wine, which all of these were. Uh, but it's so funny. They had choreography. They had elegance on the mouth. They had a little bit of finesse. The Nebbiolo was the only was the only one that was a little bit too big for me, yeah. drinking normally. So let's give this a try. We have a little bit of this left. 
Re this is the Vino Tinto, really dark color. I mean, these are opaque, inky, dark wines. I want to see what it smells like. Mm. Sure, you want to smell this? No, go ahead. Thank you. This didn't fall apart at all. Uh, really, really, the Vino Tinto was probably the easiest to drink out of all these wines, I would have to say. The Tempranillo... Um, the Tempranillo was a close second. The Nebbiolo was the biggest. I have to tell you, these wines are humongous. Like, for instance, I could only drink about a glass of them, maybe a glass or two. They were so excellent, but a glass or two, and they were just so heavy, so rich. I get a little bit of chocolate, cherry, dark for a little bit rubber, a touch of earth. I don't know. Is anything else you remember about the Vino Tinto, Shereen? I think it was a little... Floral definitely. definitely the, all his wines, you picked up a little bit of floral notes. Let's give this. Incredibly, incredibly rich, big fruit on the mouth. These are dense wines. I, this says it's 13.9% alcohol. I doubt it's that low. I bet you it's a little bit higher than that. Um, a lot of mocha, chocolate. And what sets these wines apart is, man, these wines have incredible structure and a long end palate. Anything you want to add on top of that? Just want to talk. This is, I mean, he only makes 500 cases of these per year as of right now. They're going to be starting to sell in the U.S. I think Camus is going to start carrying them eventually. I mean, these are... This is a funny thing. Like I had this wine rated at 4.7, the Tempranillo 4.6, the Nebbiolo 4.2. I have these two rated so high because they're so technically well made. They're so sound. They have such massive fruit structure and end palate. But in terms of my preference, these aren't my favorite. This isn't the type of wine I would always go to, but I definitely can respect how well made they are. So I think that ends a, a little spiel on the American influence in the valley here. Anything you want to add to that? Okay, great, excellent. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. I will see you at the next episode.